All right, friends, hello, and welcome to Gig Performer's YouTube channel. Uh, I'm here today with special guest Miko Patama, who is gonna be showing us how he uses hardware in combination with Gig Performer so that he can get the best of the best sounds. Miko, thank you so much for being with us. I'm so happy to have you join us one more time. Yeah, thanks for the invite again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, before we jump into like Gig Performer, who are you? What do you do? Like, give people kind of the the overview of uh, your career and you know how you're using music. So, hello, people. I'm Mikko Patama. <laughs> yeah, thirty-something uh, musician from Finland, uh, working as a freelance keyboard player and piano player and teacher, also an educator, mm -hmm. and I play various different groups. Uh, cover bands and original music, tango, Argentinian tango, Finnish tango. And I have some Queen tribute shows coming up yeah. later this year. So I basically make a living by waiting for the phone to call, <laughs> phone the <to laughs> ring, and then do whatever is asked. Yes. And yeah. That's awesome. Just out of curiosity, how long would you say it took? for you to feel comfortable making a living as a musician? Like, I'm assuming you started probably, I mean, how long have you been doing this? Like 15 years, 10 years? Yeah, I started kind of doing more or less professional gigs about 12 years ago. Yeah. And then, of course, I was a student. And as a student, you get basically some funding from the government, government in Finland. So, mm -hmm. uh, I was a full-time student back then, but basically around just before graduating in 2017, I, I was in a situation that I was getting enough gigs. I was getting asked to enough projects to really sustain hmm. a living mm -hmm. by doing that. Of mm -hmm. course, every once in a while I might do some like, uh, part-time jobs. Mm -hmm doing something else, but usually I would say maybe 70 or 80 or 90% of my income comes from playing and then a little bit comes from teaching and then, mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. So I would probably, a short answer would be maybe, um, six years ago, mm -hmm. I started feeling comfortable with the idea of sustaining yeah. a living. Yeah, and I feel like that's important to mention because, like, this process is such a journey. Like, being a pro musician is a journey. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to make connections with people. And, and actually, that's part of the fun, right? Meeting the people, becoming yeah. a part of the projects, doing, like, the work. But um, just, yeah, for anybody who's watching who's, like, at the start of this, like, keep going because it is possible. People do do it. Um. So you combine hardware and software, and that's what's special. I mean, amongst other things, um, I really the thing that caught my eye about what you do is the type of musicality that you bring to what you're doing. And it was just fascinating to me that you also are using Gig Performer. But the way that you're pairing hardware and software together is very cool. Um, so can you talk just a little bit about like your... Um, your approach, like why you use software. Tell us about what hardware you're using and how it all works together. So I've always had a bunch of different kinds of hardware keyboards for different yeah. kinds of purposes and projects. And basically I could do every single gig I do with just hardware currently. Mm -hmm. Like I quite recently got this Phantom 07 from Roland and just like last weekend, very typical set of cover gigs I just did just with the hardware. But then there are some more special gigs, I would say, special projects that are very important where I don't want to have just good sounds or just very good sounds. I want to have the ideal kind of sounds that I really think are the best that I can make. Mm -hmm. And that's when software usually comes in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's expanding the palette. I'm never usually gigging with just a MIDI keyboard and a laptop. I just don't trust laptops enough for mm -hmm. doing that. Mm -hmm. 
but I might have sometimes even 90% of what's coming out of the speakers coming from software. And mm -hmm. sometimes there's more hardware stuff going on. Or sometimes like right now, I'm just running a hardware keyboard through some software effects on Geek Performer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like you can take a bass sound and combine it with effects or combine it with layers of other things to create the most ideal result right the, yeah. the the best sounding result at the end of things um cool yeah absolutely so let's uh let's have a look uh, there's one special project you're working on called yupu group which is where you are using or where i found out about you using gig performer through um do you want to give us like a super brief overview and then maybe we can talk about kind of the inner workings of how you have everything going on yeah sure so Yupo Group, it has a long history. It's just a, mm -hmm. it's a band that plays progressive rock and the original lineup was founded in the early 70s, 1970s. This violin player, composer, Juhani Poutanen, Yupo, he founded this group with his friends and he was very excited about especially Frank Zappa and Mahavishnu Orchestra and all, all kinds of like early jazz fusion and prog rock. And they only got to release one studio album in 1975 before uh, Yupu carried on doing orchestral stuff more. He was like mm -hmm. making a living playing in the National Opera in Finland mm -hmm. and many different orchestras and then in 2016, when he got retired, uh, he started thinking that what if there was a chance to get some of those unrecorded material of his prog rock days recorded with a group of young, talented musicians that and then he collected, asked it around and found us. So now there is a six piece group. Uh, Yupu is unfortunately not playing violin anymore, but we have a very, very good electric violinist in the group and the guitar, vocals, drums, bass, yeah, and keyboards. And originally it was only instrumental music that Yupu group used to perform, but the new songs are also have Finnish lyrics by mm. some Finnish poets. So we also released a new album just this year in May called Umpeen kasvoivat polut. That's a nice Finnish lesson for you. Yeah, uh, you can have the link in the des description. And yeah. I also directed this short documentary kind of clip to YouTube. So link in description of this video where Yupo Group and Juhani Poutan especially is introduced. And awesome. yeah, definitely check out the album because I'm very, very, we are all very proud of it. Yeah, it's pretty, um, it, it's worth listening to. There's some, at the very least, even if you're not into prog rock, the musicianship is exceptional. So it's definitely worth worth checking out and like really diving into. Um, like you mentioned, links in the description. So if you want to get super familiar with the history behind it. Um, but um, Miko, would you mind showing us your, your gig performer setup and how you've got yeah, everything sure. routed? So I don't know if you mentioned... <clears throat> Did, did you mention um, what you're using, what your organ is? Yeah, my current okay. hardware clone wheel. I didn't mention it before, but I can yes, yeah, start yeah. by mentioning that one. Yeah. So I have the Krumar Mojo 61. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one manual only and some drawbars mm -hmm. and built-in effects. It has a decent, I would say, pretty good Leslie effect built in, but because we're talking about the best kind of sounds that I can achieve. I think the best Leslie emulation at the moment is the Leslie by IK Multimedia. Mm -hmm. So that's when I'm running this machine through some effects mm -hmm. on the Geek Performer. And, and does your mojo this? send MIDI? Like, is, does it also send MIDI out or no? Yeah, it yeah, does. it does. So wow. I can okay. also, I could also basically control any, uh, clone wheel organ a software here yes. and then just control it. Basically, if you know the GSI VB3 
uh, clone wheel software. Uh, the Mojo is basically running that same software inside. Wow. Okay. But since I'm just sending out audio from here, it's not really taxing the CPU that much. So mm -hmm. I don't have to have a clone wheel software running. I can just use the hardware and then just put the Leslie there as a finishing touch. Yeah. So it, that it's it's so cool like and there's so much possibility but just on a super basic level you want to have the Leslie the best Leslie you can have. It's living in gig performer and rather having than having to use a dedicated separate MIDI controller, you can use the MIDI coming out of your actual organ to control the Leslie, which is wonderful. Yeah, um, yeah that's true. So like I have the buttons, the Leslie speed buttons on the on the can you see the Leslie now here? Yep. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, the slow and fast can be controlled from here. It's so also, nice. the beautiful spring reverb can be controlled with the reverb knob of my Mojo. So wonderful. Getting some control of the Leslie also. Yeah. So for people who are not using Gig Performer, do you have those mapped to widgets on the front end of things? Or what, what has your process been for that? Yeah, on the panel. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. for the organ sound, I have the most important Leslie speed, mm -hmm. fast and slow, which is a widget controlling mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and the spring reverb. Yep. That's pretty much it for yes. the Leslie. Yes. And why? So you're you're talking about special projects kind of being the whole, like, you want the best of the best for these things. So what else, like why Gig Performer for this particular project? What else are you trying to do that required software? Well, basically when we recorded this in spring 2000 and, uh, 221, uh, I wasn't using a software. We mm -hmm. had like real hardware stuff, a grand piano, a Rhodes with a beautiful lamp, built in the amp, a beautiful Hammond C3 through a yeah. Leslie, and I also used my Profet Rev2 mm -hmm. for some lead stuff. And I basically wanted to replicate all that in software and mm -hmm. as well as possible. And since I would say Yupo Group is a big dream come true for me because I've been listening to Prog Rap since I was maybe 14. And yeah. really when this kind of dream actually comes true and you get to play this with this kind of group with that kind of musicians you really want to give your best so yeah, yeah. that's the short version <laughs> yeah no totally makes sense so you're basically using this to emulate the hardware you use to record yeah right like that's that's what's happening um, yeah, all the effects and all the every every single component <laughs> yeah i love it so can you show us what's going on maybe you could give us a little audio demo Okay, so let's start from the, maybe from the wiring view. Perfect. So here, yeah. I have a UVI plugin running two different sample libraries. The first one is the, both are actually from acoustic samples. Mm -hmm. The first one is the Yamaha C7 grand piano sample that they have. Actually now I'm playing the roads, so. <laughs> Yeah, the thing is that the Roland has, the Phantom has Steinway samples, but I grew up playing Yamaha, mm -hmm. really. I, when I was a student, I, I spent my 10,000 hours banging a Yamaha uprights and Yamaha grand pianos. Mm -hmm. So when I want an ideal kind of grand piano for this kind of more rock-oriented gig, I will definitely use something that has this kind of C7 clang, which is very good. Yeah. Uh, it's because it can also go soft. So I have mapped on the panel the tone knob. Just if I want something a bit on the, a little bit more subtle. Mm. Or then just bang. It 
can cut through the band yes like easily and then on the same uvi i have opened uh my personal favorite uh roads library called v times mark one it's part sample part model by acoustic samples it's a very expressive and playable road library so this is just a very dry sound without any effects it's so nice but as you can see there's quite a bit of effects stuff happening here yeah so what i'm actually doing is i'm emulating all the effects that i use in the studio so for example on one song i was using this nice analog uh, vibrato pedal very subtle thing you can mm -hmm. barely just hear it but when you turn it off mm -hmm. without yep very dreamy kind of vibrato yep and yeah it, it it makes a huge uh, on my end hearing those sounds hit my my ears i'm like the vibrato is like it's like the character of the sound yeah really for that song it was the perfect kind of road sound yeah so basically just rose mark one going yeah. through a vibrato and then i also added some uh cabinet emulation at the end of things mm -hmm. just to kind of have this kind of fender uh, 77 kind of tube amp uh, cabinet it's a very subtle thing it's not a huge factor of the sound but it's a finishing kind of touch mm -hmm. and then for the other effects there's also phaser so for example um on this uh, second tune on the album i used this uh legendary small stone phaser pedal with the uh, roads okay. and in reactor native instruments reactor you have the kleinstein component which pretty much i think covers that kind of very good small stone type of phaser yeah After phaser, I also plugged in some very nice tube screamer pedal. So Classic. For another part of that same song. Very nice combo. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's almost like the phaser. I mean, the, the phaser, it goes through the phaser before it hits the distortion, yes? Yeah, that's true. It almost sounds like, um, I, it's almost like it sounds like an envelope on it. It's like it affects the rate at which it gets distorted or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah, really it's a nice. very, very powerful effect. Yeah. And oh, then yeah. also... Well, the effect that I mo mostly used on almost every single song is the uh, delay, Valhalla delay. Mm -hmm. I'm using the tape delay emulation and I have it mapped here on, on my Roland so I can just add more delay to any sound. Maybe it's better on the a bit drier one. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the layout, I have the effects send on the panel, which is basically sending the signal to my global rack space. Mm -hmm. So the effects send is simply controlling this um, roads to vintage verb 
And then on the log, uh, global rack space, you can see the Valhalla Vintage Group. And I'm running basically all the instruments through the same 70s type of very colorful, it, nice it's kind It's hard of to beat reverb. the Valhalla reverbs. Yeah. It's, <laughs> or they're, they're just, they have so much so, um, personality. Yeah. That they, they add more than reverb. Yeah, and basically perfect for live use also because mm -hmm. of the CPU footprint. Yes. Basically, the CPU meter doesn't move at all when I plug in any of the Valhalla DSP plugins. Yes. And they still sound the best that I have found so far. Yes. Um, this is awesome. So have we missed anything in your gig performer setup? I'm trying to make sure that we don't skip over it. Uh, one, oh, your didn't was there your synthesizer? Uh, one thing, uh, yeah. the in the chain there is the SSL channel strip. So ah. every single instrument is running through this channel strip plugin, which is mm -hmm. basically adding some harmonic distortion, a little bit, tiny bit of SSL type of compression, and I'm also doing my basic EQing here. So as mm -hmm. you can see. It's especially in the roads and piano, it's very important to usually tame the low end a little bit. So I'm cutting the, I have the high pass filter there mm -hmm. and I'm also cutting some 200 Hertz, maybe on the piano more mm -hmm. just because as we know, many piano sample libraries and road sample libraries, they are designed <laughs> to sound amazing and wide and luscious through headphones. And then when you go to play in a venue with the band, uh, it's all just going to be mud yep. and it's not going to cut through. So I would say the most important thing before any effects or before anything you consider with your piano sounds live is doing the EQ really. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically doing all that on the console mm -hmm. and I can also control, I usually do my basic levels and gain staging here. So these knobs are, which is are controlling the consoles, input gain, output gain, and the harmonic distortion. Mm -hmm. I also plan at some point to put on the EQ knobs there, but nice. it would probably make the panel a little bit too busy. And I yeah. want to see only what I need to see during performance. Sure. But sure. Yeah, that's the, yeah, about the synth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, There's okay. Sim D tell the whole story, because you, I feel like the full picture of this, like you were using, you used a, a hardware version of this in the studio. Yeah. I use yeah. the hardware synth uh, Profit Ref2, which is, it's been one of my go-to hardware synths for the past like five years. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very strong, powerful sound, very easy to program. And I played one synth solo on the album with this particular synth. Mm -hmm. And when we were playing our record release gig this May, uh, I realized a week before the gig <laughs> that there was actually only one song where I was actually using the Prophet. And then I also heard that there was going to be another keyboard player around who had like a huge setup on the very tiny stage mm -hmm. that couldn't be moved between the sets. Mm -hmm. So I really needed to cram my setup in a very tiny space. And I, I usually prefer playing uh, at maximum two keyboards on stage. I'm Perfect. not the kind of kind who likes to have as much gear on the stage as possible. Mm -hmm. And well, for just one synth solo, having yeah. a separate big hardware synth on the stage felt a bit unnecessary. So I basically programmed a sound that is pretty close, I would say, mm -hmm. to the album sound with the Yuhei Repro 1, which is, it's not actually modeling the exact synth that I have, but it's modeling the cousin, the okay. Dave Smith or sequential uh, Pro 1, which mm -hmm. has a very similar kind of filter that yes. the Pro with the Rep 2. So a mono version of that. 
and it's just very nice to play. Of course, a bunch of effects there. So I like to play around with the amount of reverb, the tails, and the delay quite a bit. Yeah. So what is that? What you you're controlling the most when you solo on that? Like what what, uh, what parameters were you modulating there? Pitch or? Um... Yeah. So here's okay. the panel for the repro. Okay. So. All I have mapped here is the cutoff and the resonance of the synth because gotcha. I have the patch programmed there. So I don't need to modify any oscillators or anything. Mm -hmm. I just control the cutoff with the mod wheel of my synth and the resonance stays there at the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. And then I control the Valhalla delay from uh -huh. here and also the reverb level. Yes. So that's all I need to. create that kind of dreamy sound that I am looking for that song. Yeah. Well, wow. I mean, that's a very fun patch to play with. <laughs> like yeah, it yeah. sounds awesome. Let me ask you. So for that particular solo, when you performed live, was it improvised or were you yeah. trying to mimic the sure. exact solo? Yeah. I always improvise live. Okay. Okay. I have... Well, and your, yeah. your background is in jazz. Sometimes I wonder, cause I feel like people prog rock is not always fully improvised. So yeah, that's was, true. Yeah. So, but in this case, it is you're improvising during the live show. Yeah, all the musicians are improvising, of course. That's awesome. So all the solos are actually on the stage; they're different. Yeah. And one thing I actually appreciate also about the album recording, we wanted to make it this have this kind of pretty authentic '70s vibe to it, and one part of it was that. I would say 90% of what you hear on the album was played live mm -hmm. on the recording. Mm -hmm. No click tracks, no anything. I had to, of course, overdub some organ and synth parts since I still haven't grown two extra arms. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but mostly what you hear is live and it really sounds like the band. And of course, it's a little bit more explosive live still when we get the adrenaline from the audience. But I think we kind of, we really got to capture the spirit of the band on the album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's nothing like just recording all together live yeah. to bring out the spirit of the band. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Um when you're do you make use in set list view at all of like snapshots or anything like that or yeah quite a bit actually i i use it a lot really, okay because um i have this kind of rehearsal point of view so i can switch songs from the set list function of the phantom mm -hmm. so i press from the phantom the main idea is that i don't have to even glance at the laptop screen during yes. the gig Yes. All that I do is at home and then on the stage I just switch patches. And during a rehearsal, I might just want to tweak a little bit some small parameter of one sound or just the gain levels of the organ for a solo part or whatever. And then usually I think the quickest way is to just save the snapshot so all my effects settings, actually, all my when the phaser is on, when it, when it's off, it's tied to song parts in the set list view. Mm -hmm. So during a rehearsal, if I end up changing a parameter, I don't need to go to the wiring wheel or the panels or anything to make a new variation for that song part or anything. I just click save and that's it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it... it uh... It's kind of like a variation of a variation or like 
Yeah. Like you can see, you have three rack spaces here, but you're getting a lot of mileage out of those three rack spaces. Yeah. Because you're using snapshots, which I think is fantastic. Hmm. Um, all right. What do you have coming up? Like you mentioned a little earlier, but how? what are some ways people can work with you? What are ways people can see you perform live? Um, maybe ways people can get in touch with you. So currently, I think the biggest thing that's coming up is the Queen Tour end of this year in around November and December. So mm -hmm. there's this miracle uh, Queen tribute band in Finland. Mm -hmm. They've been gigging for, I think, since 2016 or something touring. And I got to join this year for their winter tour. And we're probably also playing one cruise ship gig in September already to warm up the set a little bit. But yeah, we're going to play some of the, of course, the classics, the most essential Queen stuff, and also some of the hazier, more art rock stuff mm -hmm. from the 70s. So yes. we have two sets just to have that. And it's a bit, very big kind of a production. So we're touring concert halls. There's all the visuals. There's all the kind of a Queen type of drama on the so shows. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. definitely worth seeing. Okay, awesome. And people can check out that tour by going to the link in the description. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So the website is in Finnish, and currently there is no tour dates yet for this year, but you can see some clips from mm -hmm. previous years and wait for the announcements. Awesome. Okay, sweet. And then in addition to that, you're also a teacher. So if people are living in Finland, um, they can work with you, right? Can you talk a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah. So I teach for the past five or six years. I have mainly given some lessons to my professional peers about how to live with synthesizers mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I have many, many peers who are very comfortable playing the piano, very professional. But when they see an organ, they're pretty much clueless because it's just such a different kind of beast mm -hmm. and i also teach like the basics of sound synthesis mm -hmm. in a very musical oriented way so mm -hmm. how to make sounds that stand out in an ensemble how to make good live sounds how to program just the sounds that you want from scratch yes yeah and then i also well next week i'm starting to give this uh sight reading classes mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. Lansi Helsingin Musiikkiopisto, a music institution in Helsinki. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, that's fantastic. Um, Miko, thank you so much for popping on and showing us uh, your rig. Um, did I actually play any organ, actually? <laughs> I don't know if you did. You should play some organ. Can you play some organ for us? Yeah, yeah. I can <laughs> give some... Just open up the beautiful spring reverb. Yeah. yeah. That was worth the whole time in and of itself. So that's the organ sounds insanely good. 
Yeah, that's the core, I would say, the true jewel, jewel of this kind of setup, I would say. Yeah. And it really stand out, stands out in the live situation. Yeah. And you get so much dynamics and power by just using the drawbars. And the Mojo has such a nice uh, tube drive going on. Also, if you want to do something more rocky. And really barks and growls and yeah. does everything like that. Just like a real Hammond. Yeah. So. And the so the organ there is driving the audio and you're using Reverb and Leslie within Gig Performer. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Miko. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. Um, don't forget, if you are watching, to check out uh, those links in the description. So if you want to connect with uh, Miko, uh, you need some lessons, uh, sound design, or piano, or I guess probably organ too. Um, yeah. He's got his website. Queen Tribute Band is coming up. Um, thank you so much. Um, yeah, awesome. Thanks so much, Miko. Thanks. <laughs>